Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us today at this event, which is part of the Yulm Flow um, program. Uh, my name is Maria, and I work in the International Admissions Office here at uh, Yulm University Milan. And I'm super pleased of introducing you to today's masterclass uh, on uh, creative um, tourism and made in Italy, conducted by Professor Marta Friel, that I thank for joining us today. Um, just a couple of words on to today's program. Uh, in a couple of minutes, Professor Marta Friel will start off this masterclass, um, which is aimed at introducing you also to the Master of Science that uh, Universita Yum offers in hospitality and tourist management. Throughout the entire uh, masterclass, you'll have the chance of writing down all the questions you've got in mind uh, in the chat on the right of your screen. And uh, I'll read them out loud to Professor Friel at the end of the masterclass. Uh, make sure you stay tuned up until the end, because uh, as soon as the presentation is over and the questions are over, we will cover all uh, the entire uh, admission process uh, for the Master of Science in Hospitality and Tourism Management, as well as how to become a young student in general. I don't want to waste any more of your time. I thank again Professor Priya for being with us today and um, enjoy this masterclass, everyone. Thank you very much, Maria, and uh, good afternoon uh, to everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, masterclass uh, of our <clears throat> Master in Hospitality and Tourism Management. So I will uh, share my screen uh, for, uh, uh, for our presentation. Um, today we will talk about uh, um, creative tourism and made in Italy. Uh, talking about new opportunities uh, for, uh, for destinations and uh, the travel industry. Um, first of all, I would like to briefly uh, present myself. Um, I teach in our uh, course uh, in Hospitality and Tourism Management. I teach uh, Cultural Heritage Arts and Tourism. Uh, and also I teach Strategic Marketing in Hospitality and Tourism. And uh, I, um, <clears throat> my main uh, fields of research and work are linked uh, uh, especially on uh, tourism management uh, and cultural tourism management. And in the last years, uh, as we will see in a moment, uh, also on these uh, new issues about uh, uh, the merging of uh, new ways of doing uh, uh, cultural tourism and um, in particular creative uh, uh, tourism and uh, the link between the tourist sector and the cultural and creative industries uh, sector. Um, it is uh, difficult to discuss today about, uh, about cultural tourism. Uh, we know this. Uh, we can see here some images uh, uh, from uh, um, cities uh, around the world uh, in April and uh, major cultural tourism uh, destinations. Uh, we have faced and we are still facing an unprecedented situation which was particularly hard for uh, cities of art and for cultural destinations and for the so-called vibrant uh, cities. Uh, and uh, also we are experiencing, and we will probably experience uh, also in the next years, uh, important changes in the consumption habits of, uh, of tourists, um, of tourists and all tourists and also cultural tourists. So it is difficult to discuss about this, uh, this topic, but it's also very challenging and for in some ways uh, very interesting because we know that uh, tourism is still uh, suffering in many countries uh, and also cultural institutions do. So we, we need also not only to look at the tourist sector, but also at the cultural sector. But um, we see, and many studies are telling us, uh, and many researchers, that uh, uh, expectations of recovery are good. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> We see uh, uh, every day how much uh, operators are now busy in uh, redesigning their services and their products uh, to prepare themselves for the post-pandemic challenges. And this, uh, we can uh, witness this uh, both uh, in the tourism uh, sector, but also very much uh, in the cultural sector and in the creative industries in general. 
And here you can see uh, also um, a report uh, that was presented uh, just uh, uh, some weeks ago by the World Travel <coughs> Organization uh, on how now in, uh, in many areas of the world uh, restrictions uh, uh, are falling and slowly in some countries where possible uh, tourism is recovering. Um, why uh, we discuss about culture and tourism? Because this is a particularly interesting segment uh, of, of tourism. Uh, cultural tourism before the pandemic was one of the major growing tourist segments, so a very interesting segment. Um, and we have uh, witnessed an expansion of uh, uh, cultural tourism around the world in some countries, such as, for example, Italy, cultural tourism accounts for more than 60% of um, international tourism in the country um, and uh, culture today is a major factor of attraction for many destinations. Culturally in general, so we will see afterwards, no, uh, we can adopt uh, a strict uh, definition of culture but also a very broad one uh, that takes us also to uh, new sectors, uh, to the, the production of contemporary culture and many other cultural uh, experiences. Um, and why cultural tourism is considered to be um, such an interesting tourism? Um, not only because, of course, it was a fast-growing segment uh, of, uh, of tourism flows, but also because cultural tourism has a number of characteristics uh, which can be summarized uh, here in some points, uh, of course, uh, we will need a lot of time to discuss them all. But uh, in general, it's considered a more accessible um, tourism to many destinations. Of course, we know that if we have the mountains, we can uh, develop ski tourism. If we have the sea, we can develop uh, uh, sun and sea tourism. Uh, while every destination can really invent something about um, culture, uh, festivals, events, uh, and, uh, and so this is a, um, a kind of tourism that is uh, very much accessible for many destinations. Um, and the culture is everywhere um, in the end. Um, it is considered to be uh, a quality tourism, and this is something that we could discuss, uh, but in general, cultural tourists are uh, considered to be um, the best tourists that we can attract uh, more interested in territory, in the traditions, uh, in experiencing uh, the local culture. It is a um, kind of tourism with uh, uh, that uh, generally has a lower seasonality than other kind of tourism uh, because, of course, cultural tourists can travel also uh, in low seasons uh, for different reasons uh, uh, to attend uh, off-season festivals, uh, events, uh, etc., or to visit cities of art. It is a high travel spending, uh, and we know this because, uh, in general, cultural tourists spend more than other uh, kind of tourists. And also, uh, we can see in some cases, of course, not in the cases in which we have uh, uh, over tourism phenomenon, we can see positive effects in heritage conservation policies uh, and valorization policies. This is, of course, uh, because uh, when a destination perceived that the local heritage is something attractive, interesting for tourists, uh, uh, of course, um, it is uh, uh, more um, interested in investing also for the preservation and conservation and valorization of this uh, uh, heritage. Of course, this in theory, because we could debate about all these points, uh, um, and in particular, of course, about the last one, because we know that uh, in the last um, years, um, 
recently is a, um, a problem that started uh, many decades ago, but uh, with the huge expansion that uh, uh, tourism experienced before 2019, um, this became a very uh, topical problem for many destinations. So in the last years, uh, major cultural destinations uh, has, have been at the center of uh, the debate on over tourism. And here you can see some images now about the bridges in uh, overcrowded bridges in venice uh, uh, the protests in uh, cities such as uh, barcelona but we can find uh, um, many many examples uh, around the world and also uh, uh, protests from uh, uh, residents uh, in asking tourists uh, to go to go home and this was um, of course, a central issue uh, until 2019. Uh, many observers uh, argue that this uh, will be again a problem, and it is very important now to think about it and to also think at new policies and new ways um, to overcome this problem in the future and to develop innovative policies. And this is also a little bit about what we will discuss um, uh, today, um, because uh, uh, the question for us is, uh, you know, can still uh, uh, can this still be the model for the future? Is uh, what tourists are looking for when uh, traveling around, and uh, when we will all be able to travel again? What kind of destinations we will look for? Uh, in our uh, in our desire for having cultural experiences around the world, and so traveling for uh, for culture uh, with cultural motivations. Um, so this is a very important um, question to ask ourselves uh, today. And uh, uh, inside this question, we have uh, other important questions. So we need to rethink cultural tourists today. Uh, on the one side, to understand which were the trends uh, um, in the post-COVID, in the pre-COVID uh, um, uh, ways of doing cultural tourism and uh, also which uh, uh, were the trends in the consumption of culture and um, of culture in general. And in asking these questions, we must think also at the future and think how we can find new ways of connecting these two sectors uh, to make them uh, work better together in the post-COVID-19. So the idea is to think more when discussing about uh, cultural tourism, to think how we can help uh, um, cultural development and sustain the cultural sectors through tourism on the one side, and on the other side, of course, developing innovative uh, cultural products and services uh, um, through, uh, through culture. So uh, these are central questions uh, uh, for the uh, next months and years uh, uh, when we will need to be uh, very competitive uh, uh, on the market uh, again. And uh, in general, cultural tourism has been a very uh, popular concept uh, for all these reasons no, that we just discussed. Uh, but a little bit uh, vague and uh, for this reason very challenging and uh, um, there is uh, uh, some scholars say that uh, there are almost as many definitions of uh, cultural tourism as there are tourists visiting cultural places so uh, we can intend cultural tourism in many different ways and the idea today is to try and find the, the new ways of experiencing uh, the culture of places in innovative way creating interesting uh, cultural tourist products uh, and uh, developing uh, uh, new ways of exploring cultural destinations for uh, the cultural tourism of the future and also to uh, match together well the, these two sectors uh, to help uh, um, to mutually uh, support their recovery. So we can understand, of course, uh, in, in general, now we think about cultural tourism uh, 
uh, as visiting museums and heritage sites. Uh, here you can see Villa La Rotonda in Palladio in Vicenza, just uh, uh, an example, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, um, we can think about cultural tourism as uh, visiting museums uh, um, and also a traditional way of intending uh, cultural tourism is about visiting archaeological remains. Uh, uh, here you can see the Roman ruins of Baalbek in uh, Lebanon. Or again, and this is a um, more recent uh, way of uh, enjoying culture and doing cultural tourism uh, to enjoy also local traditions uh, and intangible heritage. And this, uh, in some way, is a narrow definition of uh, doing cultural tourism. But we know that um, today, also cultural tourists has, uh, have evolved very much. Uh, they are looking for innovative way of experiencing culture. And more and more, they want also to uh, be co-creators uh, in their doing, uh, in traveling and in doing their cultural experiences. And so an, uh, an, emerging, uh, um, an emerging issue is uh, that of uh, uh, a shift from uh, what we usually call cultural tourism to what we call today um, creative tourism. So if we have said that uh, the relation between culture and tourism has been a major source of tourist growth uh, uh, in the last years and for decades, um, more recently, um, there is a big discussion, which is not something academic, is really very uh, real, uh, uh, both at the destination level and um, in international tourism organizations, uh, uh, such as the uh, UNWTO or also other international organizations, so, such as the OECD, in uh, trying to think at new ways uh, to integrate cultural and creative experiences in tourism. So we are witnessing the increasing importance of creativity um, in supplementing new ways, new models uh, of uh, uh, doing uh, uh, tourism based more on experiencing intangible culture, but also what we call creative industries. What we intend by creative industries uh, we have uh, um, different definitions uh, uh, depending on uh, <clears throat> different definition of uh, um, in different parts of the world and in different countries. So, but generally, we intend uh, uh, as part of the creative industries, um, the fashion industry, uh, the design uh, design industry, contemporary architecture, uh, publishing, uh, cinema, gaming and uh, all those creative sectors. So they, it is interesting to understand today how this uh, big world of uh, uh, producing contemporary culture and uh, producing um, creative products uh, can integrate uh, both uh, in a B2C level and in a B2B level with, uh, with the tourism industry. And, uh, um, and we, we see this very much at, uh, in destinations and in the ways of uh, uh, doing tourism. <clears throat> so we see, in fact, an increasing attention of tourists for creative experiencing, experiences. Sorry. And, uh, um, and creative industries today uh, play a very important role in meeting the needs of these creative uh, uh, tourists. Um, and we will see some examples in a second. Just uh, to say that um, this becomes particularly important today, thinking at the post-COVID-19, which will be the trends uh, in doing tourism in general, but uh, especially in uh, uh, doing cultural tourism. Um, people um, had a lot of time to think about uh, what to put in their bucket list, uh, so the places that they really want to visit uh, once in, in the life. Uh, um, they will look more and more, and we know this from several studies that are coming out 
they will be looking for social but not crowded holidays. Uh, they will be looking for smaller destinations. Um, and also, uh, they will be very much interested in uh, um, innovative and valuable experiences. So the value that travel gives to me and that uh, <clears throat> my tourist experience give uh, uh, to me in different ways uh, uh, for my well-being, uh, in increasing my knowledge, uh, increasing, of course, uh, uh, entertaining, and etc., uh, etc. Et so, um, how um, can uh, creative industries and uh, um, be part of this uh, recovery process, and how they can interact with tourism to innovate and create new products uh, for um, for the future of cultural tourism. Um, <clears throat> as I said, we need uh, today to expand uh, uh, our concept of culture and to find new and more effective ways to, on the one side, promote and sustain cultural and creative production through tourism. Um, and so what do I mean uh, in, in that uh, um, we can use um, tourism as a laboratory where to uh, experiment uh, uh, new products, new services. Uh, uh, tourism has been a killer application for many uh, innovations uh, in the last decades. Think, for example, at the sharing economy uh, and for many new trends. Think, for example, at the application of virtual reality, for example. So tourism is a particularly uh, interesting industry in which to experiment innovation. And this can be through also uh, thinking at uh, cultural innovation and creative innovation. Uh, and on the other side, uh, use uh, creative products and services to innovate uh, uh, the local tourist products and the local tourist offer, uh, strengthening the competitiveness of destinations. Uh, and just to give uh, an overview of this, we can see very much how creativity and creative experience uh, are more and more integrated in tourism. I think, for example, just to give some examples, and then we will see also some examples. Um, we can see uh, how many new web platforms and distribution platforms that sell exp tourist experiences are based on uh, creative activities. For example, uh, have uh, wine and food itineraries, uh, music itineraries, uh, um, tours of contemporary architecture, uh, tours in craft laboratories. No, So all these uh, creative uh, sectors are becoming the focus of uh, many, many ex new experiences. Um, but we can see this also on um, uh, in the hospitality sector, where, for example, we can see courses and uh, creative and local experience integrated in the offer of hotels uh, um, and in other kind of accommodations. Uh, uh, and we can see also how culture and creativity are uh, displayed also in destination portals. If you open a destination portal of uh, any uh, good destination uh, at the national or regional level, you can see how much uh, uh, culture is at the center of the offer. Uh, so if you, I don't know, if you open um, the website of uh, Visit Denmark, you will see uh, how much uh, uh, design is promoted uh, as a, an attraction in the country. Uh, in Milan, you can see the importance of the fashion industry and the design industry as uh, elements uh, <coughs> characterizing the local offer. Uh, but also, this is not uh, um, confining the um, in leisure tourism, because we can see a growing interest also of business tourists in having a part of their travel experience dedicated also uh, to creative experiences and to experiencing local culture. So this is something that we can find uh, at the attraction level, uh, in the hospitality industry, also in the travel industry. So new services on board, uh, uh, a big evolution, creative evolution also of sectors such as travel retail. So we can see this very much. 
and uh, to be um, and this how we can see this at the distillation level we see more and more tourists uh, that uh, travel to see contemporary art sites uh, and uh, uh, in destinations such as this is um, an image of the um, uh, of the Iseo lake uh, uh, with the uh, Cristo installation, uh, the floating piers, uh, which was uh, very successful. It was not uh, intended for tourists. It is, of course, an art intervention, a contemporary art intervention. Uh, but this had a huge impact uh, also uh, on the promotion of uh, the destination. And it was a very interesting experience. So people today move to experience contemporary art. Another very nice example for it is uh, uh, the Arts Electronic uh, uh, Festival in Linz, a very small uh, niche uh, um, kind of uh, um, product, uh, but uh, uh, attracting people from all over the world. Um, integrating performing art also in, in destinations which uh, are not uh, uh, by vocation cultural, I think, for example, to this uh, uh, very nice initiative uh, uh, that uh, I went on for um, many years now in the Trentino, which is called the Sound of the Dolomites, where you can have a, a, a nice walk in the mountains and then have a beautiful concert in open air uh, with uh, very important uh, performers. And, uh, and this is a very interesting issue at uh, Yulm. We are, we are working now very much also with destinations uh, on developing music tourist products uh, and also uh, trying to match performing arts, theater uh, with uh, tourism experiences to innovate uh, uh, the products at the destination level. These are also very interesting uh, cases because they permit uh, also to sustain um, cultural professionals, artists, uh, in working with uh, the tourism industry and tourist professionals. Uh, or uh, we see uh, also people traveling uh, to see uh, contemporary architecture. And there are now interesting startups uh, um, working in uh, organizing and distributing this kind of experience. Uh, um, so there are architectures uh, and many other startups that work today in organizing this kind of tourism and this kind of experience, which are all niche tourism, but very interesting and um, able to innovate the local offer and to take the tourists um, far from uh, the overcrowded itineraries of uh, mass tourism and make really discover territories in a different way. Again, cinema. Cinema is another creative industry that really gave um, a very important contribution in developing many destinations today. Uh, here you can see the web portal of um, the National Tourist Board of Ireland, which really worked very well in uh, valorizing uh, the presence of uh, um, of the shooting of Star Wars uh, in Ireland, uh, building up uh, itineraries uh, in discover, discovering the nature of the place and uh, have experiences for Star Wars lovers. And we have many, many examples on the very interesting interaction between uh, cinema and, uh, uh, and tourism. And I'm sure that uh, in all parts of the world uh, from which you are coming from, you can have good example about this um, in cooperation. But this is a very nice case because they really worked very well and they developed very nice uh, tracks and itineraries and uh, um, valorizing not only the territory, but also many um, uh, uh, companies working on the territory. Again, another really uh, fast growing tourism, which is related again to creati the creative industries, is uh, uh, the wine and food tourism. Uh, why we consider this a creative tourism? Because, of course, uh, there is a very important component of culture inside uh, food uh, and inside wine. And because the wine and food sector itself uh, 
uh, experienced very interesting collaboration with other cultural sectors uh, in the last years. So, for example, with contemporary architecture, and we have uh, today Mm, uh, wonderful uh, uh, wineries um, that were built uh, by international renowned architects and are today uh, very important uh, uh, attractions uh, on the destinations uh, all around the world. And in Italy, of course, we have many. In Tuscany, we have very nice examples too. Um, and a so important phenomenon that uh, the OECD uh, a couple of years ago dedicated uh, a report on food and the tourism experience. Um, and here we have also many, many examples. If you open again uh, many destination portals of important destinations, you will see how much the food culture is becoming central um, in, in the tourism experience and in the mm, promotion strategies of destinations. Um, Again, design. Design is an old, another creative industry that uh, is uh, co collaborating very much with tourism, and design is becoming an important attraction uh, for tourists all around the world. And we can see this um, especially with regard uh, to uh, design weeks uh, around the world. Here we can see the Milan Design Week. Unfortunately, in the 2019 editions, as we know that. Um, uh, the pandemic then stopped uh, the next edition and the Sojo Design Week in China, which is also a very interesting example from another part of the world. So in this uh, context, uh, uh, so we can see here how you know, the idea of doing cultural tourism has become very broad. And this is uh, very interesting not only for tourists, uh, but uh, is important and interesting for destinations uh, and is interesting also for uh, companies working in sectors which are not inside, formally inside the tourism industry. And this is uh, an important point also in terms of new professions uh, uh, for those that are experts in tourism. So we can see that creative industries are strategic uh, for place branding strategies. We have seen in the previous slides now how much uh, creative industries contribute in uh, uh, positioning a place uh, in the mind map of uh, um, people. So uh, if I say design, I can think, for example, to Milan. If I say fashion, I can think uh, about Paris. So there are very important elements of place branding. Uh, place branding strategies that are intended, of course, not only for tourism, but also to attract talents, uh, to attract uh, investors, companies, uh, um, investments, uh, etc. Um, and uh, but creative industries. So first level is about place branding, but we see a very interesting um, new ways of experiencing this collaboration also on a B2B level in uh, product and process innovation. We can see, for example, how much um, the fashion world is uh, collaborating with tourism and many uh, fashion companies have entered the uh, tourism business. I uh, think, for example, here we have the Bulgari Hotel and Resorts, but we have also Armani and many other international brands uh, that today um, are active uh, in the tourism industry. Um, and another way in which uh, um, fashion, but also design, for example, think how much design uh, has impacted uh, on uh, the development and transformation of low budget hospitality, uh, the contribution that design and designers, so design professionals, uh, gave in the innovation of uh, um, low budget hospitality, hostels, uh, etc., has been uh, huge. And we have now very important uh, companies, design companies, uh, working around the world on this specific uh, uh, issue. Uh, and uh, if, if we think about Italy, for example, hotel contract today is a fundamental business for many Italian design companies. So uh, this matching is very visible also on a B2B level. Um, 
And finally, and this uh, leads us to the last part um, of, uh, of the today's presentation, is uh, uh, how creative industries can be strategic also in terms of export promotion. Mm. And this specifically relates uh, to the connection of tourism and made in so-called made in products that can be, in the case of Italy, made in Italy products, but this can apply also to many other countries, of course. Uh, why this um, is a very interesting um, match? Because uh, uh, we have this, uh, no, this uh, quote uh, that trade uh, follows the films. Uh, so export strategies and the effects on the tourist spending can be uh, thought uh, together. Um, what do I mean? I mean that uh, when a tourist comes in our territory, it is very important to make him uh, um, uh, try uh, and experience the products of the territory uh, and which better represent the local culture, also the local uh, production culture, um, because uh, I have a real true experience of a place also through the products of that place. And in the, at the same time, this could be also an interesting way through uh, products uh, to promote uh, places. And uh, uh, this is very visible, for example, in some industries, uh, many markets, uh, main mar export markets of uh, the Italian design products are the same uh, markets, uh, main tourist markets. Uh, so this match can be very interesting, uh, both for companies, uh, and uh, we can see, in fact, uh, uh, an increasing interest of uh, companies in uh, organizing tourism experiences inside uh, uh, their doors. Uh, we have witnessed in the last years uh, to uh, new events based on this, so what we call living industry tourism, uh, that is, for example, go inside the uh, uh, producing companies and experience how a product is made uh, or go to the um, laboratory of an artisan to experience uh, again how he makes his products uh, and uh, this is a niche market but which is growing very much and is very interesting so this is interesting for companies and is also interesting for tourist professionals because more and more companies from uh, the manufacturing industry for example from the creative industries are more and more interested in um, hiring people which are expert in tourism, which are able to identify the right target to develop this uh, kind of uh, product and service uh, that are able to manage um, also the relation with tour operators, with travel agencies uh, and with uh, uh, platforms selling experiences uh, such as, for example, a platform such as Musement and uh, many others that we have now on the market. So this is interesting and we can see many examples. Uh, this is a very nice example. I <clears throat> I suggest to go to their website. This is a company in uh, the Murano Island near Venice, uh, uh, where you can have a very interesting experience uh, of uh, glass making in a very, very um, <clears throat> old um, and renowned uh, um, glass uh, uh, production plant. Um, and they organize uh, specifically tours, uh, very, um, um, uh, how can we say, um, very special and uh, tailor-made for special clients or for special uh, visitors. Um, and we can see this in the craft sector, uh, but we can see this very much in the world of uh, the winemaking. Uh, here, another example of a company that worked very well Antinori nel Chianti Classico, in this um, beautiful estate. We can find many different experiences um, uh, which are um, designed for different target, targets, uh, tourist targets, and which in, finally interests 
not only wine lovers, but a wider public of cultural creative tourists that are interested, for example, in the history of the place, on the architecture of the place, and also, of course, in, in wine. And this can be very interesting. So it is interesting for companies, uh, but this match is interesting also for territories. Uh, um, because in this way, territories are able to exploit the investments that, com that private companies are making uh, in creating these new services and experiences. And uh, so they can capitalize private investments to uh, enhance the um, <clears throat> um, uh, the place and the um, attractivity of the place uh, and they can exploit uh, uh, this uh, virtuous circle that uh, we uh, mentioned about the place in product uh, and the product in place so i valorize uh, the product in the place uh, but also uh, through my products uh, i can promote the destination abroad and this is very interesting and this is why many territories are organizing, and this is another interesting phenomenon, in organizing this offer at the territorial level, putting together the companies in specialized networks, in thematized networks. Uh, I took here just two, just to give you an example of something that is very specific of the <clears throat> about Italy. Uh, this network in Tuscany, which is called Toscana Wine Architecture, it is a network of um, number uh, of uh, uh, wineries uh, that uh, had um, their estates uh, um, and their cellars designed by international architects uh, and the Tuscany region um, decided to put them together to work together to create new experiential itineraries um, far away from uh, the overcrowded itineraries of over tourism and to um, Pro promote these experiences based not only on wine but also on the culture of wine and on wine architectures, uh, contemporary architectures. Uh, so this is very interesting and you can also uh, visit the website. Another example uh, in the Emilia Romagna region uh, is this network uh, in the so-called Motor Valley. Here the approach was different, but it's always about this uh, so-called living uh, heritage tourism and about the valorization of uh, um, made in Italy and of a uh, specific uh, production culture, which is that of uh, uh, cars and um, motors. Uh, so uh, this is the territory where Ducati, Lamborghini, Ferrari uh, um, developed uh, and uh, um, again here the region decided to put all these companies together and to work to uh, experiential itineraries, experiences, uh, welcoming tourists uh, not only in the local motor museums but also in the companies uh, and uh, promoting this kind of experience. This can be done, of course, at the regional level, it can be done at the national level, and can be done also in a very small level in a small territories through company networks. And this is also uh, a new interesting field of work because we have uh, many opportunities uh, for companies, uh, both of the creative sectors, of the made in Italy, uh, manufacturing and tourism, to work together, to act together on the markets, uh, to find different ways also to access funding, um, and of course to strengthen the offer and to innovate uh, uh, the offer for the international tourist market. Um, finally, this means uh, also, and this is why uh, these topics are also part of our master course, uh, uh, all these new trends in experiencing the culture of places in the end, no? Um, is also about uh, new professions and new business. Uh, here we can see, for example, a new startup. In our course, we have a specific course dedicated to uh, new startups in tourism. Um, Mm, this is an Italian startup that works in promoting and selling experiences in uh, um, the uh, uh, craft work, craftsman workshops. Uh, 
Um, so it's about creating new businesses, uh, uh, understanding the trends and uh, developing new businesses uh, on the one side. And the other is uh, to mm, look at new professions uh, emerging in the matching of these two sectors. Uh, professions that are tourist professions uh, uh, dedicated to the Made in Italy companies, uh, but also new professions in general. So something that is being invented, such as, for example, the network managers uh, that have to manage, develop, design uh, these uh, um, local networks of companies uh, that decide to promote themselves on the tourist market. So this is, um, of course, only a very general overview of this topic on which we have a whole course. Um, at Ulm. Um, and uh, so I finish here and I thank you very much for your attention. And of course, if you have any question, I am at your disposal for, uh, for, any, for any comment or question or to share materials, etc. <laughs> Here I am. Thank you very much, Professor Friel, for this wonderful masterclass. Um, actually, the audience was quite active throughout the entire lecture, which, um, which was absolutely great. Um, apart from the compliment that were many during, um, during the entire lecture, um, a few students uh, did inquire a little more generally about the course, so hospitality and tourist management in general. Um, a little later on, I will explain how to enter the course, so the bureaucratical and boring part, but perhaps it might be interesting for them to hear uh, your own perspective on the course if you want to share um, some insights on the Master of Science in Hospitality and Tourism Management. Um, yes, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, and I'm uh, happy that uh, you were interested in what we discussed. Uh, um, some of these topics are discussed and uh, deepen inside our course, which uh, uh, from next year we will have um, some um and in some innovations also in our course, uh, because we will have uh, a, a first year, which is common to um, all students uh, um, with a number of different courses. So one is about cultural heritage arts and tourism, so where these topics are discussed. And then in the second year, for the students that decide to stay in Italy and not to go to uh, take their second year in the US, uh, we have uh, two different uh, paths specialization path. One is more on uh, data analysis uh, for strategic decision making in hospitality and tourism, but especially in hospitality. And we have a second path which is uh, more dedicated to um, developing uh, um, strategies uh, for sustainable destinations, uh, where of course culture enters very much, uh, creativity enters very much, uh, but also the issue of events that we didn't mention today. This is another very important part of our courses and is a very important uh, a tool for territories and you know, to develop tourism and to promote culture. So events management is an important part also of uh, our reasoning and place branding too with optional courses. We have also optional courses in this. So uh, of course, these are very specific topics, but uh, for those of you that are interested, you will find them inside the course. Beautiful, thank you very much. Um, I selected just a couple more questions that were more specific on the uh, on today's lectures. Uh, one is from uh, An Hong Nguyen. I do apologize if the pronunciation was wrong. Um, are there already many tourism companies in Italy that run cultural tours? Can you give some examples? Uh, and then he clarifies that he means companies uh, which run tours professionally. Because as I see in the presentation, there are many companies that specialize on their own product. So I, I think he um, refers to providers, like external providers. Yes, this is a very interesting question. Thank you. Because, uh, of course, many companies, the big ones, are able to organize 
able not <laughs> entirely to organize the products and experiences by their own and in any case they need uh, prof tourist professionals to do this but it's very interesting to see how um, many uh, small travel agencies are today trying to specialize and to survive you know, in a very complicated market but are becoming very successful um, in specializing in niche tourism that are uh, culture-based. An example, uh, last year we did a very big project on uh, classical music tourism and opera tourism. And we see here very interesting small tour operators and specialized travel agencies that are able not only to survive, but to be very successful on the market uh, because they offer very high quality and very tailor-made products. So I think that this is also one of the trends um, uh, and when I said in the post-COVID, the quality of products uh, integrated in the quality of territories will be really strategic. And culture is, of course, one of the main topics uh, in, in, this, uh, in this way of reasoning. Beautiful. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'd say we've got just a couple more minutes for one last question um, from Cristina. Uh, is asking, she's interested in a Made in Italy tour. Uh, does she need to get in touch directly with the producer or the factory or any local tour agency organizing this kind of tour? It depends on the aim. Uh, <laughs> of course, if uh, she's interested as a tourist, uh, here we can find very interesting companies that are organizing uh, tours um, by their own, but also we have very interesting um, also publicly uh, promoted, maybe not completely managed uh, networks uh, that uh, at the local level, such as the one I mentioned, that uh, uh, promote tours and itineraries and territories. Um, uh, and uh, if uh, the question was uh, from a uh, professional perspective, <laughs> of course, uh, um, both ways uh, i mean uh, if you want to be a professional in this uh, in this field uh, you can uh, both propose yourself uh, to the companies uh, but also try to uh, develop uh, a new business in this and this is also a topic of our i mentioned already this uh, uh, course on new businesses that we have at the second year of the master we just finished it this year we worked on music tourism in fact um, at least for a part of the course uh, well today i think that in the platform economy uh, there there are a lot of opportunities to start in new businesses uh, and new startups uh, for uh, the um, distribution uh, of uh, this kind of uh, very specific products. Thanks a lot. Um, I'd say we did receive a few questions also, like a request, more than questions. If it was possible to then receive the presentation or part of the PowerPoint, if this yes, is... Yes, sure. Yes, of course. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then uh, I would close on, um, if you agree, on something that Cristina says. Um, it's more of a, um, her, it's her thoughts, so it's not a question, but uh, she says uh, the impact on certain destinations after famous shows is relevant and makes me worry uh, about the sustainability of tourism in those areas. Um, she feels like they've been explo exploited and not lived fully. Um, she wants yes. to use this. Uh, thank you, thank you, Professor Friel, for uh, food for thoughts that she, she, you provided her with today. Thank you very much to Christina. Uh, this is a huge topic. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't address the issue of sustainability. Uh, we are studying very much today on. Uh, on smart policies uh, for uh, sustainable tourist destinations uh, uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, cultural destinations are particularly fragile and uh, this is a huge topic we have a course on this too so uh, because you need a course to uh, to address this topic uh, but yes uh, is a very interesting consideration Thanks a lot. I don't see any other questions um, as of now. Uh, so thank you very much, Professor Frio. Thank you. This masterclass has been uh, absolutely amazing, learning so many new things. And I 
so that also the students really enjoyed this masterclass. So thanks again. And one of the Thank other you. Uh, was to organize this kind of lectures more often. So <laughs> I we will do it for sure. <laughs> Done deal. Done deal, guys. Thanks okay. again. Thank you again to everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. And hope to see you at the Yulm. Exactly. Um, so, guys, I saw that there were quite many questions regarding uh, tuition fees. When does the course start? Um, so, uh, right now, as um, as the presentation, the masterclass ended. I'd like to um, ask for just a few more minutes of your time to cover uh, all these topics. And if you've got other questions uh, regarding the bureaucratical part, uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, cover them all. So I'll share my screen. Here you go. Um, so as you heard, Professor Friel is a, a teacher at uh, Universita Yulm, and uh, I've been lucky enough to be a student as well of uh, this university. Our university is based in Milano, Italy, and uh, it mainly the program of uh, Universita Yulm mainly focus on communication and languages. Sorry, it's uh, sorry for the the beeping noise. I do apologize. Um, Yulm University was founded a little over um, fifty years ago here in Milan, and uh, it's um, the main core. The main area is communication, foreign languages, tourism, and promotion of cultural heritage. And this is uh, perfectly mirrored as well in the three faculties that the university has, that are communication, interpreting, and translation, arts, and tourism. The first faculty the university was founded on was the one in interpreting and translation, because uh, what communication was uh, back then, when the university was established, was to make sure that two different cultures could communicate one another. The university is a private institution, not for, for profit. It means that students do pay tuition fees, but they are entirely reinvested um, within the university. Here are just a few numbers regarding our university. Um, there are more than 7,000 students, uh, 300 teaching staff members. And um, if you take into account uh, international students uh, in English, um, in the degree courses that are taught in English, uh, there, are, there is more than 20% of international students. And um, here you can see just uh, a few more numbers like uh, for example, the university is made out of seven buildings. This is quite unique. As you'll see, it's like an American style campus. So it's a very safe environment. All the buildings are just around one street, uh, including uh, one of the two residence dorms um, for our students. And of course, as I mentioned before, it's based in Milan. Uh, Milan is not just famous, uh, I mean, I know it's famous worldwide for uh, fashion and design, but it, it's not just that. Um, Milan, from its very name, uh, which was uh, Mediolanum, means in the middle of the land. So it truly is a multicultural hub. And it's also, of course, the economic capital of Italy. And it's Milan, it's um, located in uh, Lombardy. Uh, the region where Milan is located is Lombardy. Here you can see just a few information regarding our university and the services that we offer. Um, there is, of course, a very strong international dimension, um, which is, um, as you heard from Professor Friel, um, it's a part of, um, of the nature of the university and the programs that are offered, uh, including, um, of course, any student can take part in the Erasmus program. As Professor Friel mentioned before, students um, attending the Master of Science in Hospitality and Tourism Management can then spend their second year um, in the United States at the University of Central Florida, um, more specifically at the Rosen College. Uh, another very, very important dimension of our university is um, the job market. Um, students of, um, of Yulm uh, are breathing the job market from day one. As soon as they are freshmen, they start their university, uh, their academic career, they will breathe the job market throughout the entire, um, throughout their entire journey. 
for instance, this was exactly the reason why I've chosen personally Hume when I was 18 and um, I didn't know what to study next. I've decided to uh, go for uh, um, a program and a university that would have allowed me to uh, have an international perspective together with um, with a job that I liked afterwards without studying 7,000 million years and then be sad and unemployed. I managed to be um, to do exactly the job that I wanted and I need to thank my university for this. And of course, we do offer uh, a lot of services such as counseling, peer tutoring, um, and also, for example, during uh, the past pandemic, um, you will see it uh, afterwards, we offered many services to uh, support our students also from a psychological the past pandemic from the COVID-19 situation I meant. Uh, we did support our students uh, also psychologically um, a lot, for example, through a, a mindfulness course that we offered. This uh, part is regarding the Italian educational system. Um, I will just skip it because I wanted to focus more uh, specifically on the um, on the services that are offered. As I mentioned, of course, there were um, mindfulness sessions, psychological counseling. Um, of course, as soon as the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, started, we switched from in presence to online lectures. And uh, we supported and are supporting our students um, continuously. Here you can see the programs that we offer. Um, here are the bachelor's degree, so three years, the ones you can enter uh, as soon as you finish high school. Uh, most of them are still Italian taught and you can see them at the top of the slide. But we do also offer one entirely English taught program, which is corporate communication and public relations. Um, you can then follow those, um, continue your academic career with a two-year master's degree. Um, we do offer two uh, master's degrees that are entirely taught in English and that are, that are both uh, dual degrees. Uh, one is a strategic communication and the other one is hospitality and tourism management. Uh, the one we just uh, talk about, um, spoke about with Professor Friel. In this slide on the other end, uh, you can find the one-year masters. So um, there are both professional and executive masters. Our one-year masters that you can enter uh, right after your bachelor's degree. And in some cases, for example, for the executive ones, um, we do offer international marketing and sales communication. There is also a one-year master dedicated to the tourism and hospitality industry, uh, which is international tourism and hospitality, uh, which is like a spin off of the two-year master's in hospitality and tourism management. It lasts for one year and it has a very, very peculiar structure. It's made out of six months of lecture, then a study tour uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and then the university will uh, help you and will find for you an internship opportunity uh, in Italy or abroad. So it's a quite peculiar, um, unique, I'd say, um, structure for a, a master uh, a one-year master. In order to enroll, uh, it's super easy to enroll in any of our bachelor's degree. The minimum requirement is, of course, uh, um, to have at least 12 years of schooling while reaching your high school diploma. Um, proficiency in the language the taught uh, the, in the language the course is taught in. So Italian, if you want to attend a bachelor's degree in Italian, or English, if you want to attend um, corporate communication and public re relations, which is taught in English. We do have a dedicated application platform, which you can that you can see here, apply.ulm.it. Uh, you can just upload your documents, and uh, it couldn't be easier than that. For what concerns two years master degrees, so the ones we just uh, spoke about, um, the procedure is even easier for English taught ones, um, English taught programs. You upload your documents, uh, we evaluate them, and um, if everything is okay, if you are eligible and the documents are all good, we will invite you to the admission interview that will take place on the same platform. The requirement, of course, it's a bachelor's degree in a field related to your chosen program and proficiency um, in English if you want to study an English top program or Italian. If you do not have um, an English or Italian test, we can organize uh, uh, an assessment test for you just to prove that your uh, language proficiency is equal or higher than B2 level.
Here you can, I heard, I've read a lot of questions regarding tuition fees and financial aid opportunities and uh, with, and I thank students for asking these questions. Uh, the reason why I said before it depends is because uh, as you can see here, there is a flat rate that applies for international students. So any student whose household uh, produces income outside Italy, uh, of 8,400 euros per year uh, for undergraduate programs and 9,800 euros per year for postgraduate, two years postgraduate program. In both cases, they are divided into three installments. The reason why I said it depends because students uh, can benefit from a 50% tuition reduction uh, purely based on merit. So based on, uh, for the first year, based on how good they did um, at bachelor's level, so on their final bachelor score, and um, they can renew this 50% tuition reduction for their second and their third year as well. And, and for their second year for a two-year master's or for their second and third year for a bachelor's degree. We do also offer uh, on-campus accommodation for international students at a special rate of 280 euros uh, in one of the buildings of the university, the ones that I was mentioning before. Uh, it's a very good deal, trust me. For Milan prices, 280 euros per month, uh, it's a bargain. On top of it, students can also apply for DSU Regional Scholarship. In this case, it's based both on merits and income, and students um, that uh, receive this um, DSU Regional Scholarship um, will manage to have uh, a grant up to 4,500 euros. Here are just the last key facts about our university. You can see from the pictures, this is our campus. It's just 10 minutes away from Duomo. Um, by subway, we have a dedicated um, train stop, subway stop, which is called Romolo Yulm on the green line of the metro station. Uh, there are three on-campus cafeterias, one public park, plenty of services for students, and um, of course, everything you have to reach uh, from the university is at walking distance. On this last slide, you can on this last slide you can find our contact details. Uh, the email address is admission at iulm.it. Um, of course, you can visit our website or um, the number you see here plus thirty nine three four eight one four zero nine seven four two is also available on WhatsApp. It's always here with me. So if you've got any questions, I suggest you take a screenshot of this slide. And if you've got any questions or thing that comes to mind afterwards, um, you can just send me a message and I'll be glad to cover all your queries afterwards. I'll stop sharing my screen and um, I will now look uh, if there are any other questions in the in the chat box. Um, one second, please. Does Yuma allow attending in one particular project in one master program? Uh, I'm not sure I, I understood the question. Um, I suggest um, if, um, if you want, perhaps just send me a message on WhatsApp or send me uh, an email at admission at iulm.it and I will be more than happy to cover all the details regarding uh, your question. I don't want to uh, take any more of your time. I thank you all for uh, joining us today and for taking part on this uh, to this masterclass, uh, which is part of Yulm Flow. I thank you all, and um, I hope to see you all in September in Milan. Ciao.